We are the keepers of the flame, the sacred order. Let the ceremony begin. I'm 2D Faithful Acolytes. We take a look at this. And from the Angry Goat Pepper Company, it is Lipstick on Wildlife. Oh yes, that dream girl is the sweaty beaver. And this is her hot sauce. She's standing and look up. A pool of sweat it looks like there. <laughs> this art is... <laughs> Uh, it's that's fun holding it looks like a jalapeno possibly I don't understand what's going on with that pepper but I think that's a jalapeno good times good 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 times so this is a uh, really curious sauce what do they give it here they give it a hot so they give it a 8 out of 10 uh, so for this sauce, I just had to basically split it in half. Oh, actually four is, I don't think I would give it a four. I think I would give it, I believe I gave it more of a three. You can check that out and more commentary, of course, in the, uh, written review link to which is in the description below. So let's take a look at the old ingredients here. We start off with a chili pepper blend of chocolate halves. Maruga scorpions and ghosties. Then we go to red Mex sorry, New Mexican red chili powder, water, apple cider vinegar, lime juice, lemon juice, smoked Vermont, maple syrup, granulated garlic, sea salt, smoked paprika, and cumin. Okay, so that is a lot of things in here. The blend actually works pretty well. Although, it, it, it's a bit more on the scorpion side than I think I would prefer, but the blend itself is not bad. The maple syrup doesn't really show up here as a flavor. It's more of a, a sweeteners is how it reads across. There is a bit of a smokiness to this. I do like this quite a lot. With all these ingredients, the cumin, the garlic, and so on, I felt like this was going for more of a Southwest sort of vibe, but I, I, I'm not sure I can say that definitively. This is part of the Forbidden series. <laughs> oh, I really wish Angry Goat would, would just put that on their website, what they mean by Forbidden series. They've got all these little allusions to the label. Maybe nobody notices it but me, but... I kind of wish they would expand on that. So anyway, though, we got the red chili. We've got, you know, the the uh, cumin. The paprika, I think, is here more for color than anything. We got some garlic. I mean, there's enough here that I think this could go towards a Mexican-y vibe, which is kind of how I've been using it. But I will say it is actually good on other stuff as well because it's not exclusively locked into that sort of... Um, food type all right you see we got a fairly thick oops, somewhat of a fairly thick pour here i love the color of this this hue is beautiful this sort of gorgeous rich red here almost uh it's getting a little bit maybe towards a maroon i mean it's got a really almost a sort of mole aspect to it I really, really love this coloration. This is one of the prettiest sauces I think I've I've had. Very nice. I mean, it smooths out pretty quick. It it's as far as flow goes. I, I think it's actually pretty good. It's about where it needs to be, I think, for this type of sauce. So, very, very nice on that account. Uh, the apple cider part of the apple cider vinegar does show up, but it is not to an offensive degree. So. 
we can definitely live with it. But uh, let's get down into this. Right off the bat, we get super hot. So we get the scorpion. Definitely the chocolate halves. We get a little bit of smokiness there, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of the apple cider vinegar. The garlic is reading a little bit as well. Sort of a general, probably from the New Mexican chili powder, sort of a general chili also. It's very nice. A little bit on the grainy side, but I quite like this sauce. It's a, it's, it's definitely another banger from uh, Angry Goat. No question about that. So, like I said, I've been using it on Mexican style stuff. So we're gonna start with the tortilla, and I've got here some refrieds, and this is, I think it's a, uh, the pulled pork. I couldn't find carnitas at the store. I think this is pulled pork. But a little bit of cheddar here. So I figured we just make ourselves a burrito. Make ourselves, make me a burrito. I mean, if you were here, I'm, I'm sure I'd make one for you too if you want one. All right, the constant struggle to see if I can actually make a reasonable, reasonable looking burrito. So I'm gonna try to go with a little layer here of the sauce. Try to integrate it a little bit. So this, this pork is not flavored. And oh, I just want a pretty burrito. Okay. Um, I think we probably better stop there. Or I won't be able to close it. So just a little bit more on here, or a lot more, I guess. I would say this is more of a, I don't know how they meant it, if they meant it as a Mexican style sauce or what, but I would say it's a little bit more towards that side than not. But I do also like it on chicken strips. I think with the right kind of pizza, it would be interesting. I wouldn't use it probably in like a, any sort of a cream dish though, just because I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of sweet stuff. in that setting a lot of the time. All right, so can we do it? I should have left myself enough room. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 I think we might have it here. I think we might have it here. Baby, look at that. Oop. <laughs> there, I almost dumped the damn thing on the floor. Try that again. Try that again. You, you guys didn't know you were coming here for comedy. Comedy of errors. Incompetence. There it is. Rolled ourselves a nice burrito. Very gorgeous. Not splitting the seams and leaking out all over or anything like that. I gotta let this thing sit here for a second. Let it think about what it did, let the cheese get a little bit warm. Try to hold this shape a touch, but uh, all right, let's get into it. Part of the problem with these skins is that these are like a high fiber skin. Um, this burrito does not like to stick to itself. You know, some of the white flour ones, you can get it to sort of stick to itself. These never do. Mm. 
there's not enough moisture in them, and you have to be really careful if you get it wet because they'll break. So. But I'm old enough, you know, I gotta pay attention to things like getting my fiber in and all that. It's a pretty easy way to do it. This by itself, I think, is like 15 grams, something like that. Not counting these reprise or anything. So I don't have a lot of mouth heat, but one of the things I've noticed about this sauce is that it is really good at building esophageal and internal heat. It's just a really odd aspect of this. Like, mouth heat is, I mean, I can certainly tell it's warm, but it's not smoking me out or anything like that. It definitely is hot enough that I would say probably chili heads would be the ones who should uh, be looking at the sauce and nobody else, but. You know, I gave it a three. The sauces that hit a three or higher, three is kind of the dividing line. If it's a three for me, it's probably gonna be too hot for normies. This one is easily a three. Chocolate habaneros, I think, are just such a... So a while ago I saw... <laughs> I'm interrupting myself here. Okay, so I saw this Epicurious video with smoking egg curry. And... He and I are on the same wavelength with a lot of peppers. He doesn't like the scorpions particularly. Doesn't think they're a good tasting pepper. I'm in that camp also. Habaneros, he finds to be extremely overrated. I have no, no uh, argument to that either. In fact, if they're not fire roasted, I don't generally have a whole ton of interest in them. Or smoked. The chocolates and the red savinas, I would exclude from that conversation but the other, everything the other ones definitely overall it's an overrated pepper he's a huge fan of scotch bonnet as am i but like you said the chocolate halves i think are kind of their own thing those i think I, i'm really surprised people don't use those more and the red savinas as well in the case of the red savinas, I kind of get it. Because those probably are not as available. They seem to be a fairly... And I don't know, I could be way off on this. I don't grow peppers, I don't do cultivars, I'm doing that. So take this with a heavy grain of salt. But the red savinas seems like a fairly specific cultivar. And the chocolate habaneros, I think, seem a little bit more broad. But I could be way off on that. Orange and green, I'm just not generally too much a fan of. Green peppers in general, I would actually say that about. I'm just not a huge fan of those. The, uh, The chocolates. I can't think of a bad chocolate pepper I've ever come across. But definitely I like reds considerably more, or even the yellow orange or scotch bonnets, than any of the green peppers.
And it's not to say that color is necessarily indicative of flavor, although possibly it is as well. Just a little something I've noticed. This is a, it's not just, it's not a straightforward sauce. It's good here, I like it here. It's good on, on uh, strips, I like it there as well. But to me, it doesn't read as a, like I said, a very straightforward Mexican style sauce at all. Which I think has to do with the scorpions. <sighs> Definitely, uh, Definitely punchy. Uh, let's, uh, I'm a good solid three. Let's just see if I can push it a little higher. Oh, well, it is a good, solid, robust three. No question about that. It's winter. So it's snowing behind me, I don't know if you can see. I've got a crack in my lip. Every, so this has citrus juice and, of course, peppers and vinegar and salt and every time it hits that crack on my lip it's just a ah, little bracing bit of pain so pain on top of pain yeah yeah i would actually say this is over it's probably i would say it's pushing three and a half now definitely i've got a Nice robust blaze going. It's nice though. And it takes a while to get there. I mean, scorpions will get there eventually. But they seem like they take a while. Sometimes. Ghosties, I've had ghosties go either way. And of course, habaneros, habaneros in general are definitely a building pepper, so. It shouldn't surprise me that we have a nice crispy blaze that just takes a, a bit to stoke it and get it going, so. Quite nice. This is a, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of a silly, saucy photo here. Oh my God, there's a, I didn't notice that there's, there's like a bikini bottom on the God. Oh, angry goat, you guys are, you guys are silly. I like it. I like the saucy stuff, though. That's a little racy. Never hurt anybody. Never hurt anybody. So uh, I'm good with it. That must be the Forbidden series. The sort of, uh, the sort of uh, spicy, sort of tingly little nature of the of the entendres of their sauces. Hot cock, I think, was also in there somewhere. And there's a review of that as well. If you guys want to check that out. But yeah, a very delectable sauce. Very nice. Definitely will get a good bit of crispiness going though. Uh, I will I will certainly give it that. It's got a foot in both the Mexican style sauces and in sort of a, just a general sweet hot, which is I think a pretty hard act to pull off. But this one does it pretty well. So uh, yeah, definitely this is well worth well worth looking into. 
But uh, anyway, that's good here for this one. This is the Angry Goat Sweaty Beaver Hot Sauce. Number four. In peace. To serve the flame. 